Should we play it for him? Should we? Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> it's really bad, but I think it almost is a way for us to just see where everything started. So why don't why don't you play it and we'll let him listen? This so bad. Just wait, wait. Hey everybody, this is Pat from the Smart Passive Income blog. Uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to this. I think that's so awesome that uh, you know you guys are helping me out figure out all this new podcasting stuff. I'm actually uh, just bought a whole bunch of podcasting equipment for myself because um, I mean I listen to a lot of podcasts, so I figured, hey, why not do one? So I mean, really, I, I really don't know what I'm going to talk about yet. So I just wanted to get familiar with all the equipment that I have right now and uh, what it's like to post something online and hear what people think about it. So I mean. You tell me, should I give up on podcasting now because my voice sucks so bad, or <laughs> you know, should I talk a little deeper? Or I don't, I really have no idea. So, again, just thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me. Keep coming back to the website. I got tons of information coming up in the near future, and uh, let's make two thousand nine a great year for all of us. Let's make it. Let's make it the most profitable year we've ever had. Um, and you know, I'll try my best to help you get there. So. It's Again, so good luck with everything. Happy holidays. And this is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income blog oh. signing off. Peace. There's that music again. Totally not me. I, uh... So for those of you who are watching this, um, first of all, welcome to episode 51 of SPI TV. That was a very honest look at my very first recording that I ever published online. This was back in December of 2008, a time where I was actually really excited about podcasting because, like I said in the audio, I had listened to a bunch of podcasts. Podcasts are really the reason why I'm here today. I had listened to an, uh, a podcast called Internet Business Mastery with Jeremy and Jason, and that that truly changed my life. And so I knew podcasting was a great way to share a message, to reach a lot of people, to change lives. So I wanted to do one myself. So I bought all this equipment, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to do a test video and see what it's like. I put it out there. And man, it's just really hard to listen to that because I can just, you can hear it. You can hear the lack of confidence. You, I don't know what I'm doing. And obviously I, when you're starting out, you don't know what you're doing. And so that was December of 2008. Uh, my first episode came out uh, July of 2010. Uh, so a year and a half later. And the reason was because, well, there are a lot of reasons. First of all, uh, technically it was a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be to set up. It's not as easy as just putting up a blog and writing content, boom, it's out there in the world. There's other RSS feeds and other things that have to happen now. Today, it's a lot easier to set up a podcast, and I have a tutorial now because I've gone through this process several times, which you can find at podcastingtutorial.com. If you want to start a podcast of your own, I just walk you through that process. No emails required or anything. Just go to podcastingtutorial.com, and that'll be there for you. Um, but more than that, I was just very fearful of how people thought or would think of my voice and my message. I was too worried about putting myself out there and my entire voice and just really opening myself up to the world and, and potentially letting people uh, clown me for what I was saying or put me down. And that's why it took me so long. And it wasn't until somebody told me that I had an amazing message to share and that if I were to do it with my voice, like I had been impacted by other people's voices back in the day, I would be able to reach more people. I'd be able to make a bigger impact on people's lives. So that got me over the hump of actually, you know, putting out my first episode in July of 2010. I have to give a big shout out to Cliff Ravenscraft, uh, Jason Van Orden for for their help. I actually hired Cliff uh, back in the day to help me with all the technical stuff. So so that was all figured out. And of course, once once you're all set up with a podcast, like technically, then then you're kind of automated. Then you just have to work on on the content. But even then, I remember recording my first episode. I don't know if you guys know this, but I recorded my first episode three times, like three separate times. Uh, the first time I recorded it, it sounded almost just like that audio file. It was really bad. A lot of ums, a lot of pauses. I was just, I listened to it and I just was not happy. It was about 24 minutes in length, 24, 25 minutes. And then the second time, I really wanted to nail it. So I wrote down, I scripted every single word I was going to say. And that ended up being like 20 pages of stuff that I just read off, uh, you know, just reading off, recording it. And it didn't sound natural, of course. Uh, I thought I did a pretty good job of making it sound natural, but even trying really hard to do that, it, it was obvious that I was, I was just reading. It's, I didn't want to bore people like how you get bored sometimes when you watch a lecture and somebody's just reading off a piece of paper. Um, so the third time, 
I said, you know what, I really want to do this. I invested money into uh, this equipment. But more than that, I've committed to actually doing this. So I need to just do it. And so that's what I ended up doing. And so I just recorded and I said, you know, whatever happens, happens. And if you go back to episode one of the Smart Passive Income podcast, you'll hear that lack of confidence. You'll hear the yums. You'll hear the fact that I just really didn't know what I was doing. But the truth is, because I knew it was something worth doing and I did it anyway, I just kept getting better and better and better. And I think that's the big message here that with whatever thing that you want to do that you know is going to be helpful to your audience and in turn, of course, help you in return, you you just got to do it. And it's going to be terrible. It's going to be bad. You got to get through those bad iterations. And they're out there. They're out there in the public and people can listen to them, but they could also listen to episode 216, which just came out, that is a lot more polished. And of course, that's what, five years later, six years later now. Um, but that only happens with experience and experience has been my best teacher. But more than that, I think what has helped me um, create a successful podcast too is the connections I've had with other people who are also podcasters. Uh, that's why I think places like Podcast Movement, the, the, the conference is really important to connect with other podcasters, to be in that world, to get to talk about and share stories about the whole podcasting thing because it, it is it is a special experience. And so if you're going to be starting a podcast, you know, know that it's okay that you don't know what you're doing. Know, however, that there are a lot of people out there who are willing to help. You know, I've done or I'm trying to do everything I can to help you. That's why I created podcastingtutorial.com. That's why I'm sharing this video with you, trying to just be a little bit more honest about really what it takes to create a successful podcast. And more than the guests that you have on the show, even more than the content that you have in the show, you have to really commit to doing this. And it's not something that you can just kind of half commit to. Um, it's something that does take a lot of time, I will be honest. And it took me a long time to figure out systems and how to make it all automated to a point where now, five, six years later, now I have a team. That wasn't like, it wasn't like that uh, in the beginning. Um, now I have a team that helps edit and post the notes and post the blog posts out there and you know have the show end up in the feed or in your devices. But in the beginning, it was all me. And I think that was a problem because I had never really wanted other people to touch my own stuff. And then when I finally got good at editing podcasts and stuff, I was like, well, why would I let anybody else do this? I can do this on my own and I enjoy doing it. But it wasn't until I got a taste of actually having other people edit my show and try, try, try that out for me that I really got to see just how much time that saved. And plus, I got to understand that there were a lot of people out there who could do those things like editing your podcast um, and, and posting it online for you, you know, virtual assistants and, and local assistants who could do it much faster and better than me. And now I've come to grow, you know, I've come to grow as sort of a, the CEO of my company, I believe, where I now know that my time shouldn't be spent doing those things. Even though I like to do those things, even though I, lo I love doing those things and I'm good at it too, my time as Pat Flynn, the owner of Smart Passive Income, uh, I should only be doing stuff that only Pat Flynn should be doing. And that is recording those episodes um, with my own voice, connecting with other people who are on the show as guests, and that's it. And then I just sort of export those files, plop them into Dropbox, and then Mindy and a few, a few other people on my team handle the rest. Um, so my advice for you finishing off this video, I'm sort of rambling, but again, just being very honest with about how I got started because a lot of people see my success as a podcaster, you know, 25 million downloads now on one of my shows, six plus million on the other show. Uh, they think it's all easy. They think uh, also that I'm just, I'm special and, and I'm not. I'm just a guy who just said, screw it. I'm just going to do it. Screw it. I'm just going to do it. That's kind of catchy, but could also be interpreted in other ways. So I'm not going to talk about that. Um, but, you know, I just said, you know what, we're just going to go and I'm going to get better over time. And that's the truth. That's what happens with everything. So as you are starting out with your big project, especially if it's another podcast that you're about to put together, just know that, yes, it's going to be hard. There's going to be people out there who are going to want to help you. And you just got to keep going. So keep learning, keep being conscious about where you're at so that you can always improve. That's a, that's something I know I can always do. I know that I still say um every once in a while and I pause and I do keep track of those because when you keep track, you can then gauge whether or not you're actually moving in the right direction. So just some tips for you as you're starting out with your podcasting journey or maybe you're in the middle of your podcasting journey right now and you're uh, on a plateau and you're just trying to you know get out of that funk. You know We're all here to help each other in this podcasting world. I'm here to help you. And again, for those of you who are just getting started, go to podcastingtutorial.com. You can check out that tutorial there for you. Completely free, no emails required. And I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to that audio file in the beginning. And uh, hopefully that shows you that, um, you know, 
even me, somebody who's now successful with podcasting, you know, we all got to start somewhere and it's not always pretty. So thank you so much. Best of luck to you. And uh, I'll see you on the blog, smartpassiveincome.com. Thank <laughs> you.